Hi, and welcome back to the channel. I'm Justin Leppard with Concertini.com, here today with another cello lesson for you guys. Today, I'm gonna delve into a little bit more of an intermediate work in terms of difficulty level, but one that's really, really popular, and so I wanna be able to get you guys started with it now, which is the first cello box suite prelude, the one that you hear in most of the outros to this video. <laughs> That one, the famous one. So the reason why this is a little bit difficult is that, first of all, most of the notes are on different strings. And you've probably already realized the difficulty in easily switching strings. Basically, each string is kind of its own mini instrument on this instrument. And so every time you switch strings, you're starting something a little bit new. But the reason why this song sounds really nice is because you have three strings ringing all at the same time, creating a lot more harmonic overlap in the vibrations that we hear than a typical cello line where you're only gonna be hearing one for the most part, if it's a melody. So the way to get started with this, I'm gonna teach you perhaps uh, the most straightforward bow stroke that you can use. There's actually no definitive version of what Bach wrote in this. Um, we don't have his original manuscript, so we don't know what bowings he would have provided for us. So this has led to a great tradition of cellists interpreting different ways of bowing and playing Bach. We also don't have anything like tempo marking. So a lot of this stuff is really up for your subjective interpretation, which is what makes Bach so amazing and also really a lifetime of study to never quite get right. So the bowing that I'm going to teach you for this is to do three up, basically to roll a chord where... <laughs> Those are different ways of rolling the chord where you, there's this chord, this G major chord. The reason why it's G major is it has a G, which is the root, the D, which is the fifth of the chord. And then at the top, you have the third of a G major chord, which is B natural. So what's nice about doing three down bows is that you're, you're really allowing it to be almost like a rolled chord, almost like um, you're just ringing out a chord. Then you do one separate bow and then do two slurred back to back. So all together, I'll do it really slowly. It's... So if you're working on this piece, one of the most important things to get right is getting a good tone on each note and also to keep it even, even though you're switching the strings. So if you really want to endeavor to learn this piece, you'll want to spend some time just on those first couple of measures, really getting it to sound right. As we start shifting around to different chords, different hand patterns, and I don't think there's a great way to play this exclusively in first position personally, so you definitely have to be prepared for that element of it. But the basic bow stroke you're going to have to carry with you throughout this, this pattern until we get to the second half, which gets a little bit different. So if you're working on this, you're, you're going to want to look at the sheet music. You're going to want to work out what pattern, your fingering patterns you're going to use. So if you're working on this, a really great way to work on it is to work on it per chord change first. For example, you might just start working on that. So far, this is not too difficult, right? In terms of fingers that you've put down, it's only one that stays the same for an entire two bars. But the bowing is what's going to make it challenging. So just start by working on that one. And when you started to get that to a decent place, then work on the second one. First work out what the fingers are, which is, uh, this is basically an inverted C major chord. And you have to do a little finger change here. But just practice that back to back. Once you've practiced those two things back to back, then you can practice changing to them. But just, just do those. Then you could couple the second and third bar together. So you would just play... Um, Thank you. 
And then when you have those two, you can do, you can group the first three all together. And as you work on this, just really try to find the, the nuance that exists in between all of the notes. It's no good to just rush through it and to not care about it. You could play this really, really fast, but it might lose some of... Or you could play it sloppily out of time. But there were some moments of that that I didn't necessarily not enjoy, and paying attention to which ones might start to teach you where you can take a little bit of time. When we play classical music, we have a concept called rubato, which literally means to steal time, but it's this idea that you can take a little extra time to play something here if then you put it back over here. And if you do it in a tasteful way, you don't hear that as rushing and dragging, but you definitely have to do it in a tasteful way and not just use that term to justify rushing and dragging. So let's skip ahead a little bit. So the lesson I would give you for the first half of this is to work out what all the fingerings are, to practice each of the different fingerings first in isolation to get it in your muscle memory and referencing the piano for intonation accuracy, and then to work on systematically stitching the bars together so that you can get the changes in place. Now, when you get to the end of the first half, <laughs> It suddenly switches character. It goes to this other place. This is part of what makes this song so, so great, is it just has this just really human, beautiful structure. It's just deep enough to leave you with a feeling, an emotional feeling. It's not just so simple. These Bach suites were originally kind of thought of as etudes. They were just seen as, oh, he's doing some different exercises, some arpeggios on the cello. Um, over time, the, the true musical genius of them has really come out. But I don't think there's ever been a question about this prelude just really, really resonating with people. So what that means is that in the second half, we can do something different with time, where each of the independent phrases becomes something of significance. So we come down here and we get lighter. We try to do a light character. And that can be its own thing. Same thing, but we're building up. And then this has a little bit of a tricky fingering. So um, it's uh, just very chromatic. So if you shift it up a half step, And then another way to do that moment might be to go to fourth position. But then you have to be able to get your way back down. And as you can see, sometimes I have to extend my fingers, which is why this is a little bit more intermediate than the beginner songs that we started working on. But basically the way to extend whichever direction you do it is to just move the first finger. So you can do an extension back if you... Or you can move the, you know, the other three fingers forward, but the effect is the same. You're always going to be creating distance between these two fingers to do it. So you're either stretching back your first finger to hit the low note, or you're bringing forward the other three. And the reason for this is just so that the structure of the ability to play melodies is intact. If you switch forward these, then you can use one, two, four to play the major intervals. So for these C sharps that you saw there, that's how you're gonna do that. And then, if you were to continue, if you were to do this next section in completely in time, uh, you don't really hear a lot of performances like that. You usually hear 
that the phrase goes to the downbeat of the bar, takes a little pause, and then starts over again. Pause. Pause. And just comes down. You can take a lot of time at this moment because now we're going to rev into the final section. And I'll give you uh, two different possible bowings for this. So the concept at the end here is that you're hocketing back with the open strings. So I like to come in at an up bow and then do um, a bow stroke where it's up, down with each string crossing. This just helps me feel like I'm really doing something like maybe a piston would move. It feels like a natural motion for me. It's much harder to do down up uh, just for mechanical reasons. <laughs> And I just have to shift up. And then here, I do one slur so that I can switch to doing down up. You just do it. Mostly first position, shift up, and fourth position. You can also put down your fur. So you can either play the open D or you can put down your first finger. And then you end with the chord that ends with G on top. We start on this chord, we end on that chord, and we do roll it. So this is a very sort of quick overview of this piece, a couple of tips along the way of how to interpret it and some of the bowings. Like I said, it's a little bit more of a difficult piece, but if you're endeavoring to learn it, the first half, just go chord by chord. The second half, really get all of those phrases right. Over time, you can stitch it together and be paying attention to the way that the time feel works out. Oh, I hope this video has been really helpful for you guys. Once again, I'm Justin Leopard. You can check out my playing at Justin Leopard Cello. This has been a production with Consordini.com. We really appreciate you guys watching, and we'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.